guys, my name is Alex Barham and this is going to be the review for the Piranha 9R2 Large. Crazy to think, uh, five years ago we never would have guessed that there would be four boats in the 9R family. Um, and the impact that going fast on a creek, making that the priority of fast and curvy, how much that would change just the way that we paddle. And uh, yeah. Very, very influential series. A year ago, the medium 9R2 or just the 9R2 came out and mixed thoughts on that boat, but the main thing that I said was, I'm gonna spend more time in it, see if it keeps growing on me, and I'm really excited to see a large and see if things change what a large would be. The reason for that was times have changed, right? When the first 9R large came out, we were still under the sick line rules and that was kind of what was dictating the playing field in racing. So no matter what, if you wanted to have a competitive boat in this racing category, it had to be nine feet. Couldn't be any over, that was it. Now, unfortunately, sick line is gone, but the silver lining is no other race organizer is playing by these rules. I mean, I used to run a race series I didn't care how long your boat was, as long as it was a short creek boat. And, you know, I think publicly, John Grace, so the green race, which is probably the next most influential race, has said the same thing. Just bring something within reason. So what that allowed is for these larger race boat designs to start to stretch out. So the first thing that you'll notice about the 9R2 large, it is nine and a half feet, roughly. And it's big. I mean, it's it's big, there's no two ways around it. And it paddles like a large boat. Um, it's not a nimble throw around kind of thing. It definitely reminds you that it has a certain stature. So what was the impact of removing these regulations on boat design? Well, in the first 9R large, you can see that the solution they chose was to right at the hips kind of blow out a little bit more volume. In the 9R2, because you can now suddenly add length, they only widened the boat a little bit, but then they stretched that the whole length of the boat or most of the length of the boat. So what does that do? It gives you a much more uniform feeling on your rails. They really do feel like once they're engaged, they're always driving in. Um, but it also does give you uh, a lot of lengths to work with. Uh, you know, maybe it's just, something going with the times, but you become so accustomed to paddling every single boat right at nine feet that any variant in that suddenly becomes very weird. Um, it's superficial, but it was one of the first things I noticed about paddling this boat. Now, dragging these rails all the way out and putting a lot of volume all the way through this boat, it sort of works both ways. So on the one hand, you have very similar rails to the medium and Prawn did a great job of making a continuity and feeling between a normal 9R and a 9R large, which no shocker because paddling a medium Mach no and a large Mach no feels so close. I had no doubt that they were gonna get that pretty tight. The one thing I wasn't counting for was the impacts in terms of the things that it changed just about how the boat paddles aside from the charging down the river. So charging down the river is very similar, but there are some little things that I thought just the added stern really changed. So regionally, time of the year that I'm paddling, um, not a ton of like deep water booths here. So one thing that I noticed was I had a lot of spots where I would take a huge booth stroke and try to throw the boat out, but there was no amount of me getting far enough back without losing control of the boat that I could take a big booth stroke and not tail tap just the very edge of the booth and then get pitched down at 45 degrees for a landing. My solution to that just became, okay, well, I'm going to do more and more off angle booths. And that worked great because those rails just dug in. And in talking to the guys at Piranha, what they're saying is, yeah, you know, it's probably just a conditions thing. You know, the Adirondacks where I paddle are not known for having perfect booth ledges. Hopefully your results will vary. 
The other thing that adding that long stern on the back really changed was it changed a dynamic about the medium 9R2 that I absolutely fell in love with, which was putting all this volume right at the paddler's knees caused the boat when it landed to just pop up and for the bow to jump up and out of everything that was in front of it. Adding another couple inches of stern behind you keeps your bow down instead. So the boat actually leaves faster on landing from drop, but it doesn't necessarily feel as dynamic and cool, even if it's a little higher performance. Uh, so it's nitpicky, but it was something I was really looking forward to uh, that just the, the 9R large just doesn't do the same way. Otherwise though, the 9R2 large to me just has a ton of personality and it has to be paddled that way. Um, I was sort of reminded of an article that Bren wrote, which was like in a, called an apology to the Machno or something like that, where he talked about how, you know, a standard Creek boat will just do things, but the 9R kind of needed to be finessed and things need to be anticipated. All of that really applied to this 9R too large. And I, I always came back to that thought and I honestly always kept comparing it to a horse that maybe wanted to like misbehave randomly. But then when I looked at video and really analyzed the spots where the boat seemingly just took off on its own, the pattern I noticed was that it was mostly sort of getting used to the philosophy of these edges and not driving enough. So if you're paddling this boat, you need to be the kind of paddler who's always on the gas pedal and pushing hard. You also are gonna to need to learn to anticipate what the boat's reaction is going to be to seams. There are gonna be times where if you're like me and you're coming from the mindset of a Machno or, or another displacement boat where little diagonal seams you know, are just solved by a quick stroke, the 9R2's edge can go in there and really lock on. Now, in some cases, this is a feature, not a bug, but if you're not anticipating it and expecting it, it can take you completely by surprise and put you right on edge and kind of take control away for a moment. It'll dissipate at the end of the seam, but it absolutely screwed me up a couple of times. One of the biggest distinctions I found about how the 9R2 large paddles versus the 9R2 medium paddles is that with the bringing forward of this wider rails, I really found that this boat drove in a way that was quite unique. Usually when I'm driving a boat and carving a turn, I'm carving the bow up by leaning back into those back edges, right? This boat, once the boat was up to speed and in current in a rapid, I was able to turn the boat and edge it most effectively forward with the edge directly under my knees. This was counterintuitive and weird and took a moment to get used to. And sometimes I would kind of lean back, make the mistake, have nothing happen, lean forward, and then it was all good again. But learning pains. If you spent the time to get to know this boat, it is really a nice feature to be fully in control while you're throwing yourself fully into a wave or something like that. I came to really like it and I was amazed so many times how being forward like that, I could flick my hips really quickly to make these super minute adjustments that would put me six inches, a foot, two feet, whatever I wanted to be perfectly in place and perfectly back in angle without even using a paddle stroke. I'm not sure how you would replicate that in, in other things, but something I haven't really noticed before in a boat, and it was super, super just top of mind when I think about how this boat paddles. Roaring down a line, throwing that edge, seeing the boat just jump where I want it to go and pull back. It was like having a steering wheel in a race car. It was so precise. So overall, what are my thoughts? Well, really, you know, I'm using this video as a addendum and addition to the original 9R2 video to sort of complement what I already said there. I thought that for bigger paddlers, the issues I was having with fairing and other weird edge grabs in terms of putting this boat against current were strongly mitigated and basically went away. That said, this boat wants to be going downstream. It really, 
for me, prefers that charging attitude. This would be a perfect trait in river running, but in creaking, it's sometimes fought with me. One suggestion that was made to me by one of the Piranha team members was that this boat had a lot of potential as an overnighter. So when I was doing river running testing, I packed a bag, brought about 15, 20 pounds of extra stuff just for the sake of doing it and seeing how loading the boat would maybe impact its performance. And I have to say, this boat's big enough. Um, so the added weight, you know, actually I really like the way it paddled with the added weight. So this will be an excellent choice for bigger guys who really want a high performance boat, but feel like everything is kind of like nerfed down and not high performance at size. Definitely, you know, 220, 230 plus guys, you got to try this one. But this boat is already quite large. It already has quite a lot of volume. I don't understand how it could possibly be the 90 gallons that's on the Piranha website. Similarly, I don't understand how the medium could possibly be 78 gallons. That just blows my mind. Um, it paddles just by feel larger than the large Machno by a bunch. And that just comes down to those rails digging in. But yeah, the overnighter thing, I could see it for, for a mellow trip where at most you're doing class four. This would be a great choice for that just because you're going to have the rails to dig in and you got tons of volume to float you. But if it was something with serious gradient, I wouldn't choose this one. Just in the same way that I said before, you know, when the gradient gets steep, I'm always going to pick a Machno over a 9R2. So yeah, very impressed. I really like a lot of the differences that have come with the 9R2 large. I have to say that when I was paddling it in the field, it... You know, like I said, it felt like a, a disgruntled pony. But when I actually came back and looked at the footage and tried to analyze what went wrong in every case, a lot of it was just not paying close enough attention to small currents that were grabbing edges. So this is absolutely going to be a boat where if you're bringing it into high gradient, you need to pay very attention to what you're doing. But if you're river running, it just by the opposite token seemed to cut across things no problem, straighten out the twisted, and just was a pleasure to just kind of just cruise downstream in. If you're looking for something in this size, it is absolutely a must to try, but there's still a very strong home in the Prana lineup for that Machno Large. And quite frankly, because of what I paddle in what region, it's still what you're gonna see me in. If I was doing a canyon trip or big water spring Canada trip, that's where the rounded edges on my Machno Large start to fight against me. So that's where I would look at one of these. But yeah, it's a solid boat. It's definitely worth a demo because I assure you it paddles larger than you think it does. I'm just trying to tell you this boat's big. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.